hello and welcome to this video all about blender shortcuts in this video you'll find very very helpful shortcut keys that can help speed up your workflow and it just makes life so much easier so to get started with you've just opened up blender and you want to open up a recent file now you can obviously go up here go to file open open recent or you can just hit Control o ask if you want to save and then you open up whatever you were working on similarly if you want to save your project Control S, this works on pretty much most applications, but Control S to save, Control N to create a new file, and this will allow you to create a general 2D animation, all the basic options there. Now let's say you've made a change that you don't like, Control Z, undo, or you didn't want that undo, Control Shift and Z, or redo. And if you're not happy with how it's going and you just want life to give up, then Control Q will quit. So that's for the basic keys, but now we'll go into the more detailed keys. Say you don't like this cube being here, you can press delete, that will delete the key. Or if you don't want to delete it, press the delete key, you can also press X, which gives you the option, and then you can delete. Now if you have lots of objects in your scene, you can press A to completely select everything. Or you can press Alt A and that will select nothing. And expanding upon that, you can press Ctrl I to invert that selection. So let's say you've got this cube, but you want to select everything but that, Control i will do that. And that is quite a handy, handy tip to have. Let's say you was doing some work with multiple models and you didn't want to see this cube because it's in the way of something else. You can, once it's selected, press H, which will hide the cube. And if you want to reveal that hidden item, you can hold Alt H to bring it back up. Now over here on the side, you have your toolbar, which you can click to reveal or click and drag to hide it again, or you can press T, and whenever you press T, it will hide and show that toolbar. N will be for the sidebar, so that will show all your transforms, all the other, uh, maybe you've got maybe you've got plugins enabled, most of them will have something that comes up on this sidebar here. Now let's say we're actually editing this cube, okay? You can go up here to object mode, and go straight into edit mode, or tab simply goes quickly through them once you are in edit mode you have one two three at the top of your keyboard for vertex mode edge mode and face mode and you can also see up here we can select that vertex edge or face now for the camera controls up here you do have the number pad you've got zero which allows you to jump into the camera zero to jump back out now you have these number pad keys also for uh, viewing so one will take you to the y position up here on this gimbal three takes you to the x seven takes you to the z and the numbers in between are for spinning in the axis so one takes you to y two spins on the y axis three takes you to x four spins on the x-axis and seven takes you to z and eight spins you on the z-axis and anything where you're seeing i'm holding control uh, that can be used as command on mac but now into moving objects so you have this move option up here and you see this shortcut is shift spacebar which allows you to get into this toolbox here or similarly just press g and that allows you to move However, if you press G and one of the axes, GZ allows you to move in the Z, GX allows you to move in the X, and GY allows you to move in the Y. Similarly, you can press G, Z, Z, and depending on where this object is orientated, it will move in the axis of the object. So let's just rotate this. We'll press G. Z, Z again, and you can see it's in the axis of the object, not the world. So GZ once would be world axis, GZ twice would be in the object's axis, and that works for all the transforms when you press it twice. Obviously the Y has not changed, so it's going to be the same. So those are probably the most common shortcuts you're going to be using and they're really good to remember so so great thing about this video being here is going to have chapters in it so you can save this video give it a like and you can always come back to it and quickly go between those chapters to see which shortcut keys you need to use the most so if you can't remember them all now don't worry you can always come back so let's go into 
edit mode. And what we'll do is we'll just press one on the numpad, so we're in the Z direction. Up here we have our different views, our wireframe view. Let's just select with the box select. The top face. And you can see if we press G, Z, or any movement in the Z, we can select that there, and S, so we can scale those vertexes in. Alternatively, if you can press X, you can press S, Z, to only scale in the Z direction. Of course, it's not doing anything, but if we were to say S, Y, make that change, we will see we've scaled that in the, the Y axis. We can scale that in the X axis as well. So all these axes can be applied to any transform. So say we want to inset that face with I, E to extrude that. S in the X. I to insert. E to extrude. S in the Y axis. We'll go back to solid mode tab back into object mode and you can see we've scaled in those axis directions and it's really really useful for modeling now you see up here we were jumping from wireframe to solid you can do that just with the z key and when you tap z you see the wireframe rendered solid or material preview but you see they have numbers on them as well so you can press z eight and it will take you to that. You can press Z4 to take you back to wireframe, Z2 to take you to material preview, Z6 to take you to the solid. So if you're looking on the numpad on the right, it's the four buttons, which are also the arrow keys in some keyboards. Jumping back into edit mode with tab, if you press C, that will give you the circle select. And with the circle select, it allows you to click and drag and you can select your objects like that so with your object selected tab to go into edit mode you can see we can select individual faces or individual edges or vertices however if you shift click you can select multiple and shift click again again to deselect whatever you've selected now alternatively you can use c to go into the circle select and that allows you to highlight all without pressing shift and escape to exit that and then you have your selection. Uh, the only downside with using the uh, circle select is it doesn't allow you to pan so you have to exit that to pan. Now what we can also do is jump back into object mode. Now for duplication of objects you can select it and shift D will duplicate your object. Alternatively you can use alt D which will also duplicate your object. From what I've heard and read is that if you're going to be duplicating a lot of objects in a scene without using something like geometry nodes or, or a particle system, then using Alt-D reduces lag and it's better for uh, performance wise. Um, it's something to do with linked data rather than duplicating that data. Uh, something along those lines, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but if you're going to be using a lot of duplicates, Alt-D is what I've heard uh, you should be using. Right, so that was pretty much the uh, basics of shortcut keys that can be very, very useful and can speed up your workflow. Now, there are a few, few more here that are really helpful, especially when doing something like um, animating. So let's say we've got these two objects, pretend they're something that can move, maybe their feet, uh, but we want them to move in unison we don't want to let's say animate this one right so we can first of all with the timeline down here select frame one press i over the object and that will give us the keyframe information let's just say we want location and rotation so now we've got a keyframe for that location if we go to maybe 60 frames and just move that forward press i again to get the location rotation See now that's moving within 60 frames. But we want this one to move at the same time. What we can do is with this object selected, 
select the one you want it to be parented to, press Ctrl P, set object, set parent to object. And you can see now they are moving in unison. So whatever this object is now doing when it's keyframed, right? The other object is going to move with it. Now this might not be useful for uh, something with really complex animation, uh, but for something very, very simple, you can parent the object to it and it will move along with it. Uh, to demonstrate, I guess what we can do is we'll just delete that object and we will highlight these keyframes, delete those keyframes as well. What I'll do is we'll scale in the Y, right? scale in the X, and we'll pretend this is a very, very extremely high poly model of a boat. So what we'll do is we'll append a base man, and this is just a, it's just a model of a man that is set to real world scale of like six foot. But let's just say we want this man moving with this boat, right? So select the man, then we select the boat, control P, parent to object. And whatever you selected last to parent is what the parent would be. Select our location and we'll just go up to there and we'll select that as well. So now you can see whenever this object moves, the man on top will move with it and he's not going to slide, he's not going to move around, he is parented exactly to where that location is. So let's go into this object here, we'll go into edit mode with tab, we'll select this face, top face, and let's just say it's a bit too sharp, we want to bevel it. On your toolbar, on the left, you can go to the bevel option here. Instead you can just press Control B and that brings up this slider to allow you to bevel. Alternatively, whilst this is selected, you can mouse wheel to have as many cuts along that to make it smoother. Because you've got the timeline up here, you can see we have the left and right arrows to skip through frames. We can hold it and we'll go through. Spacebar will play, placebar will stop. Now let's say we want to add an object, but we don't want to, every time we press Shift A to add a mesh, we don't want to add at this world origin because that's where if we were to add an object it would it would be what we can do is in object mode select our object let's say the man instead and we'll press shift s and we'll say cursor to select it that way when we press shift a to add a mesh it adds it at our cursor so shift s brings up the cursor options which are pretty useful you can reset it back to the world origin and it'll be back down here a good shortcut to know is that all fields where you have numbers you can involve math so let's say we've got 250 frames which is when this animation is going to end but we don't want that we want half our total frames we can do that quite easily with the divide key divide by two press enter and it ends up to one two five and if you don't know math keys for the keyboard it's a star for multiply minus for minus plus for plus and the uh, forward slash for divide so let's say we want to double that we can hit star two and that divides one, two, five by two. Or we can do plus 30 or plus 30. So if you're trying to get specific with numbers, you can, and it's quite easy. And that works for all, uh, all fields with numbers, you can add math to it. And that works great, especially when you're um, not too sure for an aspect ratio. You know, maybe you want this uh, 4K times by 4. 
that's now turned to 8k but you get the idea you can quite easily just multiply any number well i really hope this short video has helped anyone who needs um, guidance on shortcut keys um, if you would like me to cover more shortcut keys or any kind of tips and tricks to help you get along faster with Blender, uh, please feel free to leave a like and comment below and I'll definitely look into any suggestions that you have on tips and tricks or anything you'd like me to cover in Blender. Yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.